So as you guys can see, the Call of Duty Black Ops Cold War Alpha is downloaded, and if you have PlayStation, you can do the same thing. So if you didn't know, you could download it starting today at, uh, I believe it was like 8 a.m. Pacific Standard Time or something along those lines. So just go to the PlayStation Store, click download, and as you can see, you can hop on the game. But then once the game starts up, as you can see, it just won't let you play. So it's supposed to go live tomorrow at 10 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. All your time zones are up in the game. But um, for the meantime, I'm just going to be sitting here. Come on, come on, come on. I just want to play! So clearly we're all probably waiting to play the Black Ops Cold War Alpha, and I thought while we did, what I would do is bring you guys a little bit more background information about what you're about to play. The operators, and the story behind them, and the story behind multiplayer itself. Treyarch always is able to put together a narrative in their multiplayer games that I have always really loved, and one thing that they have done continuously is background of the operators, specialist characters, that kind of thing. And it seems to be no different with with Black Ops Cold War. You see, some of the characters are going to be taken from the campaign, like the one you're seeing here, Adler, but others, like this one, I think are going to have a much bigger backstory. Do any of you recognize that name? Here's a hint. Think Black Ops 3 and 4, not Black Ops 1 and 2. But before we dive into that, we first have to hear from Grey Hat Ink Slasher and today's video sponsor. So today's video is sponsored by Raycon, a company founded by Ray J and worn by many, many others. We've talked about this company before and seriously, I love them. Ever since I've got them, I always wear them to the gym when I'm doing any housework. Basically, anytime I need to listen to music, this is what I'm using. The brand that I use is actually their newest model called the Everyday E25s. They have six hours of battery life and in this little tiny compact case, if you throw the earbuds back inside, it gives you up to four more charges, which is insane. So you'll never be caught without your earbuds. I Like I said before, I literally don't go a day going to the gym without these bad boys. So Raycons come in a bunch of different colors. As you can see, I have the black ones in here. They're very small, compact, so they're not dangling out of your ears or anything like that. And they've literally never fallen out of my ear. Now, the best part about these is they're half the price of other premium earbuds and they're just as good if not better in my opinion now on top of this even though they're a great price if you click the link down in the description or go to buyraycon.com slash ink slasher you can save yourself 15 percent on your order for a limited time only so check out that link down below go get yourself a pair i've had some people tweet at me saying that they love them so go get yourself some they are definitely worth it like i said i use them every day and thank you for raycon for sponsoring this video. So first of all, let's start with the operators because when I made the video a little while ago asking you guys what you wanted to hear about, this was the number one thing. So tomorrow, once the alpha goes live, these are the 10 operators that are going to be available to you in the alpha. These were the 10 that were available to us when we got to play it early. Now, Here's the thing, there's various different types of operators. The first one that we have here, as you can see, is Adler. He's obviously one of the main characters within the Black Ops Cold War campaign. We have an entire backstory on Adler already given to us by Treyarch. In the year 1966, he joined the MACV, the Military Assistance Command in Vietnam, after which he joined the Studies and Observation Group. You can actually see this on his main page within multiplayer. You can see MAVC slash SOG, and he's a part of the CIA obviously in the year 1981 aka the time period for the main campaign of black ops cold war now the second character that we have like this is sims aka lawrence sims he's another one of the main characters of the campaign and as we find out via his bio that treyarch gave us he actually met adler in the vietnam war in 1966 and ever since then has kind of been his right hand man he's proficient in engineering a very smart man and has a rather dry and sarcastic persona again another character who is going to be a main part part of Adler's crew throughout the campaign. Now, out of all of the other characters that you see on this list here, none of them we've actually seen in the campaign. Some of them might be, but we haven't seen that yet. However, in the multiplayer trailer, we do see someone playing as Woods in multiplayer. So we know that he is going to be another one of the operators at some point once the game is released. So then we get to our second set of characters. These are the ones that we don't see in the campaign, but seemingly have some sort of backstory. Now, I have to preface this by saying that as of right now in the alpha that I play, there was no backstory written in game i'm assuming once the game is fully released then we'll see a little bit more about these characters but the interesting thing about this one is first of all he's american he's a navy seal and his last name is 
Baker. Now, if you don't remember, there was a very prominent specialist character in the Black Ops 3 and Black Ops 4 games by the name of Aaron Baker. In her backstory, it tells us that she comes from a long line of soldiers and a military family. This could very well make this character Baker, the Navy SEAL, Aaron Baker, or Batteries, grandfather which is super interesting to me and of course once we get more character bios we might find out a little bit more about that the next character that we have like this is named garcia and he is a part of the dgi which i didn't know what that was i looked it up and it appears to be the cuban intelligence agency which could be have some interesting implications compared to previous black ops games and then the last character that we have like this is right in the middle there unfortunately i don't have any menu footage of her but her name is petrova and she is a part of the kgb aka the russian intelligence agency that then we get a little bit more confusing because we get into the third type of operator and these appear to be milsim operators which we do have in modern warfare this one's name is stone and as of right now we don't know what military he's a part of and i don't know whether in the future these characters will get more background if they'll get some sort of intelligence agency that they're a part of and this is kind of just a place filler for now or if they are going to be sticking with this kind of milsim theme after this the next character we have is named song really not a lot of information about this one then we have vargas hunter and then and finally, the last one we have is Powers. Now, it's interesting because these Milsim ones don't really have a lot of information. We don't know where they're from. We don't know a backstory about them. And it, it just seems kind of strange. I'm honestly thinking that the Milsim thing might just be a placeholder. But we'll have to wait and see. And I'm curious to see who else is added. We know Woods is coming. It's just going to be interesting to see who else they actually add to this roster. It's also important to note that this game is going with the root of Modern Warfare. Where each individual character doesn't have their own ability or power like they did in previous black ops games they're just operators with their own story own background and just like modern warfare hopefully we get more and more information on them as the story of the game progresses now the other thing that we got a lot of information about just from the multiplayer reveal live stream is the actual background and the story of multiplayer and what is actually going on with this this is what they said during the live stream first up the bedrock of black ops deniable operations these are the places in multiplayer you never saw and the things you never did. The missions that stay off the books and the targets and sources who stay off the record. The Cold War we set out to build is realistic. It's plausible. Most importantly, it's inspired by a gritty historical tone that we've woven into every element of our game's world and story and gameplay. So the game is based off of deniable operations. Each map that you play on is one of them, and each map has its own deniable operations backstory. As he said in the live stream there, these are the operations you never went on and never really happened. But really, they did. They just pretended like they did. You get it. But just as an example, here is the backstory of the map Satellite. In Satellite, a top secret American recon satellite has lost power and crashed in the deserts of Angola. With hired DGI forces closing in, now it's a race to secure the crash site. So I have a couple interesting thoughts about this. First of all, with all of these different deniable operations, there is a backstory on every single map. And as you guys know on this channel, I love to dig into the backstory of Call of Duty, of characters. We've done maps in the past with Black Ops 4. And Treyarch always does a good job of painting that picture of a story of a map. What I am curious is if these different maps and these different deniable operations actually end up tying together to create an overarching story of the multiplayer. This isn't something that we'll actually be able to figure out until the game is actually launched, but of course, if you're interested in that, if that's something that you would actually like to see me dive into once the game comes out, just show me by hitting that like button. The more likes this video gets, the more likely I'll do those type of videos when the game actually comes out. But in case you don't understand what I mean by the multiple stories on different maps, here is the story of another map. This one is called Armada. Inspired by a real-life event, Project Azorian, CIA, JSOC, and Soviet forces converged to recover a sunken prototype nuclear Soviet submarine from the ocean floor. So I think now you'll see what I mean. Each map has its own backstory, some of which are actually inspired by real-world events. Like I said, I always love this kind of stuff, and I can't wait to see more of it once the game actually comes out. Of course, you're going to be able to start to see it once you actually get your hands on the alpha, which is going to start tomorrow. So if you have a PlayStation, you haven't downloaded it yet, go check it out. It's free. You don't have to pre-order the game. All you got to do to download it, which is pretty dope. So ladies and gentlemen, that is pretty much the backstory of multiplayer operators and the different operators that we're going to be getting, at least in the alpha. And I'm curious to see where this goes, what characters do make their way over from campaign, modern warfare 
Bears started doing that this year. Other story that gets involved with either Warzone or different multiplayer maps. I am curious to see where it goes, and I hope you guys are too. But other than that, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please hit that like button. It does really help with the channel. If you're new here, be sure to hit that subscribe button. We're honing in on 1 million subscribers. We are almost there. If you want to be a part of it, be sure to hit that subscribe button. Let me know what you think of all of this down in the comments. But until next time, I hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you so much for watching, and I guess I'm uh, just going to sit here and wait for the alpha to go live.